Hey everyone, it's Luke from Wild Pro. Today I'm here with part 5 of our MiG 200 series where we're going to talk about running solid wire. Running solid wire is awesome and it can produce really high quality welds that look fabulous, but to do so you have to know a few basic things and get your machine dialed in just right. Let's make sure the polarity is correct on the MiG-200. I'm going to do this by putting my ground cable into the negative terminal and putting the dongle that energizes the wire feeder into the positive terminal. That should take care to ensure we're running DC electrode positive. Most often with flux core wire, you run DC electrode negative, but with solid gas shielded MIG wire, we're going to be running DC electrode positive. Next, let's energize the machine and make some setting adjustments as well as adjust our flow meter. The first thing to do is make sure that your MIG-200 is in MIG mode. We do this by pressing the button in the upper left corner of the screen. Now that we're in MIG mode, we can use this center selector dial to change the values on the screen, including the voltage and the wire speed. If you rotate this large selector dial, you'll notice that the voltage and the wire speed adjust at the same time. This is called a synergistic adjustment, meaning both values adjust together at a preset value. Weld Pro designs this as a feature, and it can be great to adjust your voltage and your wire speed at the same time. There are times when you'll want to increase or decrease your wire speed or your voltage based on the other value. Press the menu button to choose your wire size. It's important that we set this so the machine operates its values correctly. Press the menu button to get back to your voltage and wire speed display. Let's say I want to have a setting of 16 volts and 160 wire speed. Use the selector knob to set your wire speed to 160. You'll notice the voltage is set to 16.9. I want to reduce this separately from the wire speed. Next, use the menu button and go in to where it says VOL for voltage. This is where we're going to adjust a percentage decrease or increase of our current voltage reading. I'm going to reduce this down to minus 3 and see how it affects my voltage. As you can see, it brought my voltage down to 16.4, but I would like it to be a little lower. So let's go back into the menu and readjust down to negative 5. This brought my voltage down to 16.1. While these won't be the settings I use for welding, this is a great demonstration on how to adjust the voltage independently of the wire speed. Today, I'm gonna to be welding on some eighth inch mild steel plate, so I'm gonna adjust my settings to about 16.3, which will give me a wire speed of 173 inches per minute. Now, I think I like this voltage. I like to keep myself down in the 15 to 16 range for some thinner plates. When you get into thicker plates like quarter inch, three eighths and things like that, you'll want to be closer to that 20 volt range and a much higher wire speed to give you adequate penetration and filler material. So for my eighth inch mild steel plate, I've chosen to start out at 16.3 volts and 173 wire speed. Now, we're going to see how this runs and then we can make any adjustments as needed. Grab your MIG gun and let's adjust the flow meter for our mixed gas cylinder. Once that's done, we'll be ready to strike an arc. To be able to test our gas flow, we need to release any tension you may have put on the wire electrode. We do this by flipping down the spring tensioner and releasing it. If you haven't installed your wire yet, you're good to go. Next, when we get to the flow meter, make sure you can see the side that says cubic feet per hour. We'll turn the high pressure cylinder on very slowly so to not shock the regulator. Once you've done this, open the high pressure valve all the way. High pressure cylinders use a double seat valve system and they can leak if not opened all the way up. To adjust the flow rate of your machine, squeeze the trigger of the MIG gun. Use the small brass valve on the flow meter to adjust the flow rate. This will be indicated by the ball moving vertically in the flow meter. Squeeze the trigger on the MIG gun to verify that your flow rate is set correctly. Make any adjustments as necessary. With MIG, we want to make sure our steel is really clean. 
FluxCore has a fluxing agent in it, so it can remove some of the impurities from the base metal. MIG wire is a solid wire, and it doesn't contain any flux, so we want to keep as many contaminants out of our weld as we can. I've got my plates cleaned up and ready to go, so let's go ahead and run a pass and see how it turns out. For the first weld, I'm using the push technique. Typically, when you push, you get a flatter weld surface with less penetration. When you drag your nozzle, you're burying the wire deeper into the molten weld pool, therefore causing deeper penetration. This weld came out looking pretty good, however, it's a little bit humped up. This is typically an indicator of low voltage to wire speed ratio. I'm going to run a second weld using the drag or the pull technique. Dragging or pulling your MIG gun can be a little more difficult based on visibility issues. Make sure you have a clear vision of where you're going or follow a previous weld or mark. I'm following along my previous weld overlapping just a little bit. You can see this bead is similar in appearance, kind of humped up. With the first set of passes down, I'm gonna bring my machine voltage and wire speed up just a little and see what that looks like. I'm going to change my machine settings to 18.5 to 48. Let's run two passes like that and see how they come out. For this first pass, I'm going to push my weld again. This weld should lay a little flatter, being that we've increased our voltage. So we've definitely achieved that wider, flatter bead appearance we were looking for. Let's drag the next pass, and we'll see how that turns out. Keep an eye on the distance between the weld pool and your nozzle. Make sure you're keeping this consistent. Also, watch your travel speed. The more consistent you can get your travel speed, the nicer the surface of your weld will look. I like the way the machine ran on that pass. The weld came out looking pretty good. As you can see, those welds are a little hotter and more suitable for a little thicker steel. Now, let's go ahead and turn our machine all the way up to about 20 and a half volts, which gives us a wire speed of about 355. Let's run these last two passes at this setting and see what they come out like. This is definitely running a lot hotter. I'm starting to be able to feel the heat through my gloves, but the weld is laying down very nice. Just as I expected, the weld came out wide and flat. This thing ran really hot. I'm gonna go ahead and push this last pass and we'll take a look at what it looks like. These flat passes on mild steel are great for training your muscle memory. The last pass looks good, but you can tell it was running pretty hot. It's nice to be able to see all of these voltage and wire speed settings side by side. As you guys can see, the varying voltages and wire speeds have a significant impact on the bead appearance and will also affect how you do or do not burn through your base material. Remember to keep a lower setting on thinner material and you can take it up a little higher to get adequate penetration on thicker material. Hopefully this video will help you improve the quality of your MIG weld with your MIG 200. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you haven't had a chance already, hit the subscribe button down below. WeldPro is committed to releasing tutorial and how-to videos to better help you hone your craft as a welder. Thanks so much for watching, and from all of us here at WeldPro, we can't wait to see what you build with your MIG 200.